this morning we want to have a look at um, the concept of sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Now when we talk about sound doctrine, what that tells us is that there is a possibility that there could be a doctrine that is not sound. But today we want to concentrate on that um, doctrine that is sound. Amen. And I want us to take a study from the book of Titus. Chapter 1. Verse 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 1. According to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. And he says in verse 2, in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie I want us to put an emphasis on the fact that God cannot lie. People can lie to us. But God cannot lie to us. Please let us understand that we are coming to a God that cannot lie. His language is truth. Everything he says is truth. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the Life. Meaning that there is no single word that Jesus says that is not true. Your boyfriend could lie to you. Your girlfriend could lie to you. Your mom may lie to you. Your wife may lie to you. Your husband may lie to you. Your dad may lie to you. But our God does not lie. He says one word. He, he means exactly that. So when we talk about sound doctrine, we are coming to a God that is not lying about the things he's saying. Amen. Amen. So he says, um, which God cannot lie, promised before even the world began. When God loved us, he loved us even before the world began. So he's not changing his mind about us. We can trust that the love that he had for us is consistent love. There is no shadow of changing within it. Yes, he may discipline us. He may come through as though he's very harsh. But it is tough love. He's being tough on us because he loves us. He wants, to, he wants the best to come out for, of us. He's doing everything that he's doing. For our Amen. Verse 3. He says, um, but has also in due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according the com to, according to the commandment of God our savior Jeremiah kasera kalage atukirize chigambo che ngakuita mukuburiwa kwa katonda omulokozi wafe Amen So when we talk about sound doctrine we want all our eyes to be focused on Jesus because he is our savior only Jesus can save us from things that are not true amen and so Paul writes to Titus in verse 4 and he calls him his own son after a common faith and the common faith was grace, mercy, and the peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. So he wanted Titus to understand that there was a standard which was common. There was a standard which was acceptable and agreeable upon. Which was a standard of grace, a standard of mercy, a standard of peace. Amen. Amen. Which comes from God. And and, and and our Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior again emphasizes. Hallelujah. Amen. When we talk about the self, the saving grace of Christ, it is really something that we didn't deserve. Because we had fallen. We had the fallen nature in us. But by the grace of God, He receives us. He redeemed us. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou should, should set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, and, the, and appointed thee. As I had appointed thee, sorry. Amen. Amen. And he said in verse 6 If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Yes. Now being um, a riotous child over there is someone who is unsaved. Some, yes, someone who has not come to the saving grace of Christ. And what Paul is trying to tell um, Titus is that the people that are being raised should be people that are actually truly saved. Amen. Amen. Not unruly. Not disobedient. Amen. Not people that are not consistent. Not people that tell lies. Hallelujah. Amen. And what he's trying to draw him to that this obedience should be unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. That as we walk in honor of God then we shall be people that are acceptable and faithful to him. So, so looking at sound doctrine it brings us back into check to understand, to question ourselves as well. Are we living really a life that is obedient to God? Or are we unruly? Or are we riotous? Amen. 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 So that's a, I feel that's a really serious call. Eh? To examine ourselves whether we are actually living our lives for God. Verse 7. He talks about bishops. Now ideally there the bishop should be probably someone who's like an elder in church. Someone who oversees the church. Someone who's in leadership. In church, right? And he says, for the bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy local. Amen. Amen. He's not greedy. He's not, you know, he doesn't get dishonest gain there. Bukusa is the last one, right? You know, sometimes we come to church and we probably are entangled with some of these things. And the danger is for us to begin to desire things in a dishonest way. He's blameless. He's a steward of God. 
never he gives account to the Lord he's not self-willed he's not looking for his own things he's not after selfish ambitions amen sometimes we do things out of absolutely selfish ambitions we want to be there and it doesn't matter how other people feel as long as we get there and he says I'm not soon angry in other words you're supposed to have you, you begin to bear the fruit of self control that means if you're not soon angry there's potential for you to be angry but you shouldn't let you know anger have the better of you as I grow older, there are things that come to your ears. And, and you want to be angry. But I don't know, for some reason, these days the Holy Spirit is like, overlook that one. And then you refuse to be angry. Sometimes I also preach to myself. I say, don't be angry. Don't be angry. Um, you know, people have done things to me sometimes. And I just, you know, while, when I'm about to be very upset, the spirit refuses me to be upset. You know, sometimes it feels like, but I'm justified to be angry. But, but the spirit, you know, draws you back. And like, don't be angry. Don't be angry. Don't be soon angry. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to downplay any of you and your feelings. But I want us to see a higher power, a higher calling. Above anger. Um, remember, situation, of course, living with children. My son dropped um, the laptop. laptop and while I was trying to get very upset, it was like, you know what, it's just a laptop. But you can imagine the words that could have come out because of a laptop being broken. I'm not taking that laptop lightly. But I'm very mindful of what I say because of a laptop. Because sometimes you can bring out a word and it damages someone's life forever. And they just believe the word. You know, sometimes words can be really very strong and very damaging. And you cannot equate them to the price of a laptop. We can never buy souls regardless of how much money you have. So it's very, very crucial for us to be, kind, to be um, mindful of the fact that it's not good for us to be angry soon. Sometimes it's just food. Maybe someone eats your food and they don't even say thank you to you. Amen. They take over doors of what you had even given them. And then you say very many words. I can see. <laughs> I know I can see people smiling about food. You know, I've learned to tell myself, you know what, it's just food. It's, honestly, it's just food. It can even go bad. But then you can imagine how some people say the amount of words they could say because you ate their food. And you didn't say thank you. Or you overtook more than enough. Mm? Let us be kind. Let us be careful. And not be angry. I don't know what upsets you quickly. But I rest it with the word of God. And don't let it have the better of you. Amen. Amen. And it says not given to wine. The Bible says instead of us being drunk on wine, let us be filled with the spirit of God. Not, um, not given, not, no striker. Are not given to filthy look. Amen. 
that one we already explained. Okay, verse um, 8 now. But you should be a lover of hospitality. A lover of good men. I don't know why he puts an emphasis on good men. Eh? My Bible says actually a lover of good men. <laughs> I get the impression there are some bad men. Amen. Amen. See, the Bible says that be careful because bad company corrupts good moral. Because every time you are with the wrong company, people that don't help you grow, they, help, they make you go down. So you want to be careful actually the company that you keep. What conversations do they go into? What words do they speak? Do they speak life or death? Do they give life or do they kill? I'm sure there, are some, there is some company that you keep and you know in your heart of hearts this is not the right company. But there are people you hang around with and you feel you're also growing. Because they're seeing life from a different perspective altogether. They see life in a way that is progressive. They see life in a way that is constructive and constructive. They see life from a way, you know, from an aspect of not being, um, what can I say, from an aspect of not being, um, okay, what's that word? Not, not, not being a life of contention and, you know, strife, but more from a positive side. When they fight their battles, they don't fight them with words. They don't fight them from a carnal perspective. But on the, you know, from a spiritual perspective. Because the Bible has taught us well that our weapons of warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So you want to be careful what company do you keep? You and I know that soon you become more or less like the guys you hang around because they have belief systems. When you hang around the person that loves excellency, they draw you into being an excellent person. So you begin to stop thinking that it's okay to do things, you know you know, carelessly. But then you begin to give attention to some detail that you were not initially giving If you hang around people that tell so many lies, you begin to kind of be tempted to tell lies. You know, you know and the worst bit is when your conscience gets seared. So much that even when the spirit tells you, but that's telling lies. And, and then you're like, but, but they tell lies and they seem to be okay. And so you also okay. begin to do a bit of small lies, right? Now the Bible does not tell us it's okay to tell a small lie. Because lies in the Bible are not sized. They're not given a size. They're not measured. If it's a lie, it's a lie. They're not even color coded. This is a white lie. You don't, you don't, if it's a lie, it's, it's a lie. You'll agree that some of you probably have hung around friends that are a bit messy, yeah? If, if you hang around guys that really super struggle with lust and lust overcomes them, it, it kind of becomes catching, isn't it? You also begin to feel like, maybe it's okay. Not too bad. Amen. Amen. You know, Kubuguma is very gentle. Now let's let's nail it, right? Amen. Amen. We came to expose some of these things, right? Amen. Yeah. So you you know your friends that you hang around and you're like, oh, nice sister. Oh, my name is Kwa Dejo Jumbe and Ajonga Masi Majuja. Oh, my brother. You know, I feel funny. Hey, you run away. The Bible says concerning these things, do what? Bible Please stop compromising in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will help you as you keep fleeing. Amen. Amen. Verse 9. He says, holding fast the faithful word as, he, as it has been told, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince gainsayers. Gain 
echiri ngo kuigiza kwa febwe kuli alioke ayinzenga okubulira mukuyigiriza okubulamu era no kusinga abayomba na ye amen i want us to hang on to the luganda version aliokenga ai alioke ayigirizenga okubulira muchiyigiriza okuyigiriza olwo okubulamu right i want to focus on that okuyigiriza okubulamu that friends there is teaching that actually gives us life it sobers us up amen it does not kill us but it actually builds us into better people it does not tell us lies but it is giving us the real truth um, in others he doesn't want us to just quarrel over things or complain about things but he wants that word to be the word that is meant to encourage into doing good it must be a word that teaches and instructs us to do good and if it has to correct us it has to be a word that corrects us so that those that are gainsayers and those that contradict the teaching of the word of God are actually um, dealt with. Amen. Amen. Um, let's go to verse 10. He says there are many unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of circumcision. Whose Whose mouth, sorry, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not for filthy locusts' sake. Abagwanira o kuzibi wange ni mwa wanga abo bebavunike nyumba en namba naba yigirize bita guani de orwama goba agobu kusa. Amen. We do not preach the gospel for selfish gain. Tetubu lila anjiri. We preach it for what it is. It is supposed to direct us, you know, to a place of being saved and delivered. The gospel should save men. The gospel should heal men. The gospel should deliver men. Friends, there is power enough in the gospel. You, I don't have to come here and do gymnastics to convince you. I don't have to. I don't have to scream very hard. I can still, you know, preach gently and the word has power enough to minister to you. I can even just come and read scripture to you here. But there is power enough in that scripture to minister to your need. You don't have to give me a seed before the word works in you. Please do understand seeds are good. Amen? But I want you to live at a place of liberty with understanding that we are not preaching the gospel for selfish gain. You can give a seed in honor of God. You know, the word of God will still work in your life. It won't, I, I don't want you to be under pressure to feel like you didn't give a seed, did you? You'll not prosper. You don't prosper because of me. You prosper because of the word of God. Please do understand what you have and your relationship. These are principal things. If you live by the principle, you, you know, you begin to Reap of it. Amen. If you live by the word of God, you, you benefit from it, you profit from it. Because our God does not lie. That's where we started. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 13. He says that this witness is true. Wherefore you rebuke them sharply, they that they may that they may be sound in faith. Amen. 
Sometimes we need to be a bit sharp in the gospel. Not a bit, Not a bit but really sharp in the gospel. So that you can have sound faith. Sound doctrine produces sound faith. Because some of us do things really without thinking at all. Friends, when the Lord gave, when the Lord saved us, He did not stop us from thinking. He allows us to think. Sometimes you're under pressure. I was listening to a story of someone, and he said that um, they asked they asked her to give all her money, her business money. So she could be blessed. Now, I, I want to think, okay, honey, did you even try and ask the Holy Spirit whether that was of God? My biggest worry is when people begin to fear men more than they fear God. Please be delivered in the name of Jesus. I have all respect for men and women of God. But before men and women of God, there is a God. Amen. Please, as you respect men and women of God, do me a favor and respect them in honor of God. Amen. Amen. Let, let's, let's not make idols of men because we also put them in a very tricky position when the Bible says that now we have not received a spirit of fear and he tells you the exact spirit you have received you have received one that makes you what? one that gives you what? Huh? you've received one of power love and a sound Mind. Sound doctrine will always give you sound faith. So even when you're doing things, you're doing them from a place of soundness, from a healthy position, not because you're terrified or intimidated by words of men. Amen. Because at the end of the day, when the men leave, you are before God. And I will, it, it's not a good feeling when you know you're before God and He's like, I did it because of those guys. You and I know what happened to Samuel. Not Saul, Saul, actually, yeah. Um, well, Samuel asks him now. The Lord had actually spoken to Saul and told him what to do, what, how to get rid of everything that he needed to get rid of. But you know, he said when Saul, when Samuel shows up, sorry. And, and, ask, Samuel, and ask him, okay, what is this bleating of sheep that I hear? Meaning Saul had not killed all the sheep. And he tells him that he feared the people. Sometimes we do things because of fear of men. But I pray that you'll be delivered and brought back to that place of consciousness and soundness. Because you know, fear of men cost him an entire kingdom. Fear of men made him banished from the presence of God. I mean, these things happen to you know, lower people and high people. It happened to Saul. He was a king, but he feared that he was going to lose the popularity of men. <laughs> you know, the Lord tells you to preach about a certain aspect. Especially talking sharply to men. Talk to them about, you know, correcting their ways. <laughs> Talk to them that I'm not happy with their lip service. And like, oh, God, 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 those people don't like that kind of someone. They just like this one. Hallelujah! You are all victorious. We were all making it. And they all shout, You are the righteousness of God. You are ahead and not a tail. You are called to prosperity. You are a great, great winner. And they all go, Hallelujah! And they are giving you false hallelujahs. And the Lord is not even an inch close to what you're saying. 
Amen. Sometimes the Lord wants us to preach sharp messages. Because you see, because he's a God of love, he also disciplines us. And friends, when we are going through discipline, it is never a pleasant experience. No one really smiles when the Lord is giving them a hot But you see, at the end of it, you come out a better person. Okay, sorry, I was just getting instructions. I'm sure they'll tell me. I don't want to overshoot the time that you guys are supposed to be here. Amen. Sometimes the word of God is very enjoyable that you get carried away. So I'm really careful. Okay. Mama Faith, what time do I finish? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, we'll carry on. I'll be told. I'm sure they'll give me a cheat to say get off. Get off. <laughs> Amen. They'll, t- they'll give me a cheat. Okay, let's go on to verse um, 14. Because emphasis there was that sound doctrine should actually produce in us sound faith right from verse 1 all the way up to verse 13 Amen So that we are not under pressure to impress people Amen I, I, it's, I'll, I'll be honest with you that's a place where I'm still trying to grow I, I'm not very good with being very sharp with people. I'd rather keep quiet and look the other side like I've not noticed anything. And I know sometimes people tell me, you know, you need to get into your position, you need to do this. And I'm like, I'll be honest with you, it's normally up under absolute fear of men. I'm a bit like soul sometimes. But I know that the Lord is doing a work in me. So even as we share these words, it's a double-edged sword for me as well. And the Spirit equally ministers to me as He ministers to you. Amen. Amen. Let's go to verse 14. Verse 14. Verse 14 says that not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from, from the truth. Sometimes we, you know, we are so engrossed with fables of men, opinions of men, and threats of men. And we turn away from the truth. Now the only way we can know the truth is when we read the word for ourselves. Now, I'm very mindful of the fact that sometimes people um, find it hard to read. But you know, we've grown the era in which we are. There is so much technology. The word of God is available to us. You know, just hide yourself in the words. Mm-hmm. Ask questions. In your conversations, what is it that you know the Lord wants us to learn? There are many opportunities of Bible studies. I want to think that this church is a very blessed church. We have we have an opportunity of being taught the word for what it is. And, and I know it is not for money. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon. Um, so we need to, um, you know, focus on what the truth is and not fables of men, not opinions of men, not stories. With all due respect, I've seen sometimes people come on a pulpit and just tell a story. Just tell a story and fake it. And people laugh. And they're happy. I'm thinking, God, that's serious. 
Friends, my belief is that we should be teaching the word of God, not stories. Amen. Because you see, the word of God has an, an ability to minister to us in different ways. He teaches us at where we are, at the level which we are at. If you haven't yet been exposed to a certain level, he will get you to learn things to that place where you have to be exposed. When the Lord told me the word probably five years ago, before I was exposed to certain things in ministry, he's teaching me differently now. Do you get what I mean? Because he knows that I'm growing. We can learn from stories, yes. But you see, stories are very unstable. They keep changing. They vary from one person to another. Let the word be our place of foundation and teaching. Amen. Because the power to change lies in there. I say many times the word of God is standard. When the Bible says that God is love, He is love in Asia. He is love in Africa. He is love in Europe. There is no shadow of him. He is love to a thief. And love to you. <laughs> Amen. God is love. And those who are in him are in love. Sometimes you feel like not kwagalering people. But the Lord is kwagala. If you want to conf confess him as your God, he's kwagala. But God is love. He doesn't know anything beyond kwagala. That is his virtue. Amen. Amen. He's a God of love. So we can't rely on fables and opinions of men irrespective of the frustrations that we go through on this journey. It says in verse, 50, amen. in verse 15, he says, Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is also defiled. Mm. So Paul tries to make it very clear here that for as long as you have an aspect of not, of not being a believer, there is nothing pure about you. Even if you're very nice, kinder, kinder. You're not pure, you're not good for God, according to the standard of God. You know those friends that are really nice people. I mean, they don't steal. They don't, they don't yell at you. Uh, they, they, they're just... They just they just be there, just nice. For as long as they are not believers, the Bible says they are not pure. That's a very high standard, right? So it, in other words, what he's trying to paint is that this walk of faith is beyond just the works we do. But it's the but it's dependent on the grace of God on his mercy and his peace that we find through Jesus. Amen. He says not even their mind but he says even their mind and conscience is already defiled. For you you just see a nice person sitting there. They don't, they don't quarrel with you but already their conscience is defiled. Amen. That's, that's quite, I mean, there are things you can't see by just looking like this. If you're prophetic, you can tell. Eh? You look at the person and you're like, the dress is clean, but the inside is a bit 
Messi and you're like, oh, Luganda, are you okay? So, when are you going to come? Guru, they are going to come. I mean, they are seated there peacefully, like this, not causing any trouble. But you can read through the consciences and intentions. You know, and the mind is already defiled, and you're like, you know what, love, you need a, you need a healer. You need help. Amen. So we cannot compromise and think that because people are just being looking nice and not causing a lot of trouble, so actually they are not troublesome people. What is trying to draw us is don't look on the outside appearance. What is trying to draw us is don't look on the outside appearance. But pointing us to the heart situation. Mm? God says that men look on the outside, but he looks at the heart. And sound doctrine actually does not allow us to look on the outside appearance of men. Some men look all neat together on the outside. But their hearts are very fallen and far from God. So you want to think about that. Where is your, the way is the position position of your heart. Amen. Amen. What is the condition of your heart? Um, before, before I ever want to do any sermon, I always like to make it a habit to make sure that my heart is right with God. See, it's one thing for you to, you know, dress up all neat and tidy. But your heart is really messed up. Amen. Amen. Friends, let us consider to make uh, the position of our hearts really um, in good place with God. That they are not defiled trying to impress men but far from God. And it says verse 16 that they profess that they know God but they are, but in works they deny him. They profess that they know God, but their works actually literally deny God. Does that ring a bell? Have you been under pressure to try and figure out what on earth is going on? Someone says they know God. But the way they live their life is really inconsistent. Does that ever disturb you a bit? Anybody here? Maybe I'm alone. I must be from Mars. <laughs> Amen. I have trouble when um, when people want to be trusted because they are Christians. Then when you put a Christian in office, the, the, the Christian steals money. They behave like Judah, but they help themselves with the treasury. Yeah? I know some of us are still on that journey. <laughs> but you know, it becomes very disturbing. Huh? I, I don't know, but I'm sure for, for you would agree with me that it's a very disturbing thing. That you profess you know God. But actually your actions are very far from The Bible says in the book of Isaiah um, It's a lamentation pretty much It says that these people worship me with their mouths But their hearts are far from me Friends it's a terrible thing for you to come here on a Sunday morning And worship God with your mouth But your heart is far from him When we worship with the Lord He ministers to us And the only way we are able to hear from Him Is when our hearts are put right with Him When we worship God with our hearts attached to Him we are in sync with what he's saying for the season. It is not just a lip service thing. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. It is not just a lip service thing. It is just a lifestyle. It is not 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 just a lifestyle. It
have a relationship with him. It's very, very important that we develop a, a relationship with the Lord. Okay, if I read it again, it says that they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work they are reprobate. You know, what they do, when, when you talk about being reprobate at the end there, it's that what they're doing is actually not approved. They are disproved before God. And it's, that's not a pleasant place. It's not a pleasant place for us to be. Every time we do lip service, we are actually walking in disobedience. Because the Lord actually is the one that leads us to do things that are right and acceptable before Him. I know this is a very hard place. Um, um, but I, I know it's just a good place for us. It helps us to grow. It helps us to be better Christian friends. I know that a lot of the mess we are in right now is because we have been walking disobedient lives. You and I know that sometimes the Lord asks you to pray. But at some moment you feel like prayer is not an appropriate thing to do. Because everyone is running to probably do something. And the Lord asks you to stay back and do something. But when you look at everyone, they are running in the completely opposite direction. I know that there are a lot of compromise that has entered the body of Christ right now has a lot to do with us being disobedient to God. Seriously. Some of the troubles we are having right now as a nation is because of the inconsistencies we have had as a body. Because if there be any correction that needs to be done, it needs to start with us. It needs to start with our hearts. Before you blame every other person, you want to check your heart. Sometimes we take things very lightly. Sometimes we misinterpret scripture. Sometimes we want to see scripture out of context. But because of the grace of God, and then sin should abound. That is absolutely not right. The grace of God teaches us to depart from evil. It has never taught us to do more evil. Because when you understand God, you want to live right with Him. You want to be careful to honor Him and not men. Amen. Amen. But all these sorts of compromises that we have gotten ourselves into, because you want the praises of men. No, it, it makes you, you know, full of. We've lost, lost our balance because of these compromises. But even sometimes when you see a wrong teaching happening, you're like, mm, not really. After all, he has crowds, she has crowds, everyone claps their hands. So you think that's, that's, that's your standard for approving? And yet before God, because they are living a life of disobedience, they are dis disapproved. So I want, to, I want to pray in the name of Jesus that we will turn our eyes away from outside appearance of things and focus on things as God wants to see them or have them. My prayer is that our hearts will be attuned to God. 
God, what is it that you want me to do? What, what is your will for my life? I know everybody could probably be singing as a seasonal thing. But does God want me to sing? Everybody could be holding a microphone and you know doing a street evangelism. Wonderful. But does the Lord want me to be on the street? Or oh, he wants me to be in a room somewhere praying. Do you get what I mean? I, I don't know. Sometimes we've done things under the pressure of men. And we have missed God. But I want us to come back to that place of just desiring to have God. Are you under pressure to get married because everybody's getting married? Are you strong enough today if the Lord told you leave, leave that sister or leave that brother? Can you leave that brother or sister for the Lord? Or you quote me a scripture and say, no, 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 no. But the scripture says, none will lack their mate. Getting scripture out of context. Sometimes the Lord wants a particular brother. Or a particular sister. The outside packaging doesn't fit in your kind. But what the Lord actually wants to minister to you is that He can actually work through you by the power of His Spirit to transform that brother or sister. But for you, when you look at them, they are like. You get what I mean? I don't know what the Lord is asking you. Maybe it's a particular job that looks really pompous. And, and, and you feel that if you take that job, you'll probably be praised, you'll be honored, people will take you more serious. And the Lord is saying, not that one. The other one. Because he wants to probably lift you up from that down level to a high one so he gets more glory. But for you when you look at things it's like mm -mm. God as far as I know the scripture says we move from one level of glory to another Sometimes we even preach at God It's like no that's not what I meant Please understand Amen I pray that we'll get to that place of understanding scripture for what it is. Not how we want to interpret it. I have known the Holy Spirit to be able to give us the right interpretation of scripture. The right revelation of what scripture is. See the beauty with um, or the intention of um, sound doctrine is one to lead us to God. If you notice this whole letter that um, this whole chapter that um, Paul writes to Titus, he's really pointing him back to God. He doesn't draw attention to himself as Paul. He's trying to get Titus to say, Titus, look at God. What is the intention of God? Obey God. Do what God is asking you to do. Amen. Amen. And then you will be established. The other intention of sound doctrine is for us to be protected from false prophecy or false teaching. Do you get what I mean? Because the danger with false teaching again the person will teach so that they fulfill their heart's desires. Not the desires of God. Friends, this world is God's world. So this world is God's world. So he wants us to do things by his standard. Not by our standard. Every time you're serving under someone, oftentimes, um, you know, like being an ambassador, right? 
you, you represent the intentions of that country. Do Do I have anybody that works in government here? Nobody in this service. Okay. But oftentimes when you're serving um, under government, you guys are private. Private, yeah. <laughs> Amen. By the way, we need Christians in government. We seriously need Christians in government. Stop chickening out. See, the problem is even some of you, God tells you to go there and then you refuse. And then when things go wrong, you begin to point fingers. You begin to cry very hard. Sometimes the reason why your friends don't have jobs is because you refuse to go and stand in the gap there. Because you think it doesn't look cool. Because you think they pay little salary. Go in government if the Lord has asked you to go. Yes, it might be starting with a small sal salary of, I don't know, 60,000. But our God is a God of increment and he has an intention why he wants you in government. Where is it written that all of you should be in private business? Amen. Where is it written? Is it scripture? I know it doesn't sound very cool. Amen. But you know, what am I trying to draw us to? A place of obedience. Yes, and obedience. Some of you have even failed to grow to a place of promotion because you're trying to sell yourself short, thinking that God is not able to work through you. Please, let's not be little of God. He is able. He is able. He could be wanting you to be in a bank. And you're just, you know, struggling, hiding yourself under people. And, and curtains. But he actually wants a few faithful people on those tills. So that we stop making the losses that we are making. He wants a few bold people. Sometimes it's, it's a place of boldness. Like I told you, it's an area I struggle with. The Lord shows you something and you refuse to say it. Because you're scared of men. But you know, the Lord is looking for a few bold people that will stand up for what is right for what it is. Am I saying it's easy? It's not easy. Sometimes it could cost you your life. But it will actually save many lives. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Because if one seed falls down and dies, it brings forth fruit. It redeems many people. So um, the third reason for sound doctrine is for us to be able to live in the presence of God. Friends, it is a pleasant experience for us to live in the presence of God. Sometimes we are in church and we have learned to do our own things in church. Because they look nice. Because that's what the church down the road does. But is it what the Lord told you to do? Sometimes we are worshipping here. And you clap your hands. Did the Lord tell you to clap your hands? He just wants to worship him. But sometimes we do things we don't even understand because we are not listening to the spirit of God. Do you get what I mean? Sometimes you come and dance a dance and the Lord just wanted you to lift up your hands. And you dance one dance and it gets everybody disoriented. Or sometimes he wants you to dance a dance and you're super scared and you get everybody confused. I pray that when we get, you know, to relating with God, we'll take it a serious business. Do, do I sound very hard? Do I sound very hard? You know, you can live in the presence of God even in your workplace, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, in the kitchen. If you choose, if you choose to. And it will be a very fulfilling life. Very fulfilling. Um, when, when I've learned to practice the presence of God, I'm, I'm still learning to, to, to practice the presence of God. Um, I, I 
feel terrible when I begin to sense that I'm actually drifting away. And so I begin to question myself, okay, where, where did I, what, what happened? What is it? <laughs> then I soon remember that I think I didn't have quiet time in the morning. Do you know those moments when you're just waking up and running like crazy? And, and you're like, you know what? We'll pray, we'll pray in the car, we'll pray on the road, okay, Lord? Hallelujah, you can hear me from anywhere, okay? Amen. Amen. And you, you don't really take that time of, you know, closeness of just staying calm and spending time with him. And you know, you get to work and everything you touch is wrong. Everything is just going in the wrong direction. Then everyone also begins to snap at you. And you, and, and you know, you clearly know I must be the problem. And you, you check yourself and you're like, God, what, what went wrong? I've shared a story one time of a friend at, at my workplace. I, I got to work and for some reason, my all my gadgets just zoned out on me. The laptop wasn't working. It literally freezed. You know that car freezing that the car thing just goes there. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll use my tablet. Also, the tablet refused to open. I said, okay, I'll try my phone, okay? Not too bad. <laughs> the, the phone decided to rebel. As I said, okay, right, I'll go to the technician. So I ran out of my room, went to the IT technician and <laughs> took my stuff. <laughs> and I thought he would fix me. And he looked at me and said, I think you didn't do your devotion on this morning. <laughs> I don't even think that guy is born again. <laughs> but for some reason, I was like, come to think about it. I did. I am sure the Lord must have been speaking to me. Because I dried myself and laughed. Acting a bit spiritual. I went back to my room. <laughs> I put myself in order. I did my devotion there and then and it didn't matter who comes in. Because I told myself, God, I can't have a day like this. And as soon as I did, the casa freed itself. Everything fell back in place. And I could almost tell that God was trying to get my attention. To understand that this is not about just me. But he's actually wanting to be a part of my life. And I'll be most effective when I live with him. What am I trying to draw at? Living in the presence of God. When, uh, when we have sound doctrine. We have the presence of God with us. We live in the glory of God. Amen. We walk in the steps of a righteous God. The Bible says that rejoice for the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. Amen. They are ordered of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to come to a close to this. But I want to um, quickly look at what is the source of sound doctrine. The number one source of sound doctrine is God himself. Um, Matthew chapter 11 from verse 25 to If you can just put it up for us, we'll read. Then Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and has actually revealed them unto babes. Okay. 
Jesus' emphasis is trying to tell us that actually God is the source of wisdom. So at any one time we actually get confused and, and where do we run to? That is not to the super wise. It is not to the super prudent. It's not, it's not to the philosopher. It's not to the gurus of this world. Mm-hmm. But to God. Because it's God that reveals all these things. I'll tell you, even to some of those people that we call the wise and the great gurus of this world. To those guys that we think can make CEOs out of nobodies. They get that wisdom. wisdom. From God. I'm sure you'll talk to me. You'll tell me about you know the wisdom that is of God and that which is not of God. The Bible says our God is a good God. He causes his son to, 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 to shine on both the evil and the good. Sometimes you wonder how people that are really, you know, evil can actually come up with very, very powerful ideas. It is from God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. So for good and perfect wisdom, it comes from God. For good and sound doctrine, it comes from God. Amen. Verse 26. Matthew 11 verse 26 it says even so father for it seemed good in thy sight it is verse 27 it says all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the father but the father neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal himself Amen. So it takes, we are saved by the grace of God. Jesus is revealed to us by the grace of God. Jesus teaches and says that no one comes to the Father except by Him. When the Lord uses us to preach the gospel and people give their lives to the Lord, it is because the Lord is working through us. So we can't take the credit and say, see, I'm a very powerful person. Yes, you are powerful. But remember that it is actually God who works in you and makes you powerful. Amen. So the number one source of um, sound doctrine, friends, is God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse, verse 10, he says, um, but but God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Can it be deep in God? In a preach deep summons, I know Kampala gets deep summons. Amen. Sometimes I sit here and Pastor Isaac is teaching and I'm thinking, Christ on earth. Where did he get that one from? Amen. Amen. But you know, it comes from God, by the <inaudible> Spirit of God. Anytime you desire to share deep things, go to the Lord. Verse 11, it says, um, for, what, what man knoweth the things of a man, save the, the things of a man, save the Spirit of a man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Verse 12. Amen. And I like the place of encouragement there. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. So God has allowed us, we have access to the Spirit, but we have to take a place of responsibility and receive the Spirit of God. And allow ourselves to be taught of God. Amen. Amen. Um, the other source for sound doctrine is Holy Scripture. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. So anytime we are anytime we are looking for where to get sound doctrine. Let us go back to scripture and let us ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the meaning of that scripture so that we don't interpret it in our own understanding but actually interpret it according to the intention of God um, third but not least as a source of um, sound doctrine is godly counsel from godly people. Okay. We, know, we all know that um, in the midst of godly counsel we can get established. Sometimes, sometimes you want to make decisions for your life. And there's people you can run to for help. And, and you know they advise you you have pastors here. You know, by, by, by virtue of them being in those places of leadership, you have elders, you have deacons, you have different leaders. I don't know, your cell leader, anybody that the Lord has blessed. By virtue of them being in that position, they have an ability. They have an authority. Thank you to actually help you um, be on firm foundation and be, you know, ha have access to a source of sound doctrine. Amen. So let us not um, turn away from making good use of them. Some, some of your pastors are really good people. I'll tell you, before I got married, I had to go to my pastors. And they prayed with me. 21 days. And they saw it, they saw just green lights. Meaning it was okay. So when Bishop asks you not to just hide your spouse to be, He's saying it from a from a godly point of view. Amen. Amen. I was sharing with someone and she said, you know what, I went to um, a spiritual father and they prayed with me. They actually said they have been fasting, praying and fasting. I was impressed. But it feels good to know that someone is praying and fasting for you. And they are going to get a word from God about you. Amen. It, it feels good, doesn't it? It's good, it's good to have um, godly people that give us counsel. And every time you feel like you're drifting off, I don't even think that guy is born again. <laughs> but for some reason, I was like, come to think about it. I did. I am sure the Lord must have been speaking to me. Because I dried myself and laughed. Acting a bit spiritual. I went back to my room. <laughs> I put myself in order. I did my devotion there and then and it didn't matter who comes in. Because I told myself, God, I can't have a day like this. And as soon as I did, 
The cursor freed itself. Computer Everything fell back in place. And I could almost tell that God was trying to get my attention. To understand that this is not about just me. But he is actually wanting to be a part of my life. And I'll be most effective when I live with him. What am I trying to draw at? Living in the presence of God. When, uh, when we have sound doctrine. We have the presence of God with us. We live in the glory of God. Amen. Amen. We walk in the steps of a righteous God. The Bible says that rejoice for the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. Amen. They are ordered of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to come to a close to this. But I want to um, quickly look at what is the source of sound doctrine. The number one source of sound doctrine is God Himself. Um, Matthew chapter 11, from verse 25. To you can just put it up for us. We'll read. Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and has actually revealed them unto babes. Okay. Look, Jesus' emphasis is, is trying to tell us that actually God is the source of wisdom. So at any one time we actually get confused and, and where do we run to? It is not to the super wise. It is not to the super prudent. It's not, it's not to the philosopher. It's not to the gurus of this world. Mm -hmm. But to God. Because it's God that reveals all these things. I'll tell you, even to some of those people that we call the wise and the great gurus of this world. To those guys that we think can make CEOs out of nobodies. They get that wisdom. They get that wisdom from God. I'm sure you'll talk to me. You'll tell me about you know the wisdom that is of God and that which is not of God. The Bible says our God is a good God. He causes His Son to, to, for, to shine on both the evil and the good. Sometimes you wonder how people that are really you know evil can actually come up with very, very powerful ideas. It is from God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. So for good and perfect wisdom, it comes from God. For good and sound doctrine, it comes from God. Amen. Verse 26. Matthew 11 verse 26 it says even so father for it seemed good in thy sight it is verse 27 it says all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the father but the father neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal himself Amen. So it takes, we are saved by the grace of God. Jesus is revealed to us by the grace of God. Now Jesus teaches and says that no one comes to the Father except by Him. When the Lord uses us to preach the gospel and people give their lives to the Lord, 
It is because the Lord is working through us. So we can't take the credit and say, see, I'm a very powerful person. Yes, you are powerful. But remember that it is actually God who works in you. And makes you powerful. Amen. So the number one source of um, sound doctrine, friends, is God. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse, verse 10, I think. Verse, he says, um, but, but God has revealed them unto us by his for the spirit searches all things yet the deep things of God can you be deep in God in God? a preach deep summons I know Kampala gets deep summons amen sometimes I sit here and Pastor Isaac is teaching and I'm thinking Christ on earth where did he get that one from amen but you know it comes from God by the Spirit of God. Anytime you desire to share deep things, go to the Lord. Verse 11, Verse 11 it says, um, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Verse Amen. And I like the place of encouragement there. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given unto us. Amen. So God has allowed us. We have access to the spirit, but we have to take a place of responsibility and receive the spirit of God. And allow ourselves to be taught of God. Amen. Amen. Um, the other source for sound doctrine is Holy Scripture. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And so anytime we are Anytime we are looking for where to get sound doctrine, let us go back to scripture and let us ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the meaning of that scripture so that we don't interpret it in our own understanding but actually interpret it according to the intention of God. Um, third but not least as a source of um, sound doctrine is godly counsel from godly people okay. we, know, we all know that um, in the midst of godly counsel we can get established sometimes, sometimes you want to make decisions for your life and there's people you can run to for help and, and you know they advise you you have pastors here you know, by, by, by virtue of them being in those places of leadership you have elders, you have deacons, you have different leaders. I don't know your cell leader, anybody that the Lord has blessed. By virtue of them being in that position, they have an ability, they have an authority, thank you, to actually help you um, be on firm foundation and be, you know, ha have access to a source of sound doctrine. Amen. So let us not um, turn away from making good use of them. 
some, some of your pastors are really good people I'll tell you, before I got married, I had to go to my pastors. And they prayed with me. 21 days. And they saw it, they saw just green lights. Meaning it was okay. So when Bishop asks you not to just hide your spouse to be. He's saying it from a from a godly point of view. Amen. Amen. I was sharing with someone and she said, you know what, I went to um, a spiritual father and they prayed with me. They actually said they have been fasting, praying and fasting. I was impressed. And it feels good to know that someone is praying and fasting for you. And they are going to get a word from God about you. And it, it feels good, doesn't it? It's good, it's good to have um, godly people that give us counsel. And every time you feel like you're drifting off, it's good to go back to your spiritual head and ask them. Ask questions, you know, let them know what you're struggling with that you will find help. I know that there is help in this place and they will continue to be help. I want to stop right here. I don't want to overshoot. I was told to end at 1.30 and I want to actually leave it here. But before I go off the pulpit, I just want to ask if there's anybody here that just wants to give their lives to the Lord. They just want to tell God, you know what God, I just want to get to know you for who you are. I just want you to lead my life. You probably have led your life but you want to just commit your life to the Lord again. I just want us to stand and we pray together Amen. Amen our God is a good God I'm sure he will welcome you and support you on this journey Amen, Amen. 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 okay Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this afternoon. I thank you for your word, Lord. I thank you for your spirit that has been present in this place, Lord. I thank you that you're speaking to these hearts of God. I thank you that your word does not fall on dry ground. Thank you that you're even present in this place, my God. We honor you. We honor you. We respect your presence in this place, oh God. But you're here just to do what you want to do. We just lift our lives before you and pray that you will do what you want to do in our lives. Help us grow in you. Help us to bear fruit and fruit that will last, oh God. For those that have been tied up and held up in situations because of the fear of men, I want to pray in the name of Jesus, Father that we'll experience a deliverance that comes from you, an affirmation that comes from you, that you, O oh God, are our faithful friend and you're here with the grace to help us to live our lives for you. I thank you, Father. Even as we go into the brand new week, we just want to commend our lives into your hands and trust you to be with us on every side. Holy Spirit, we honor you that we do not go in our might or power, but we go with you by our side. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.